recommend their service. Will you really care? Yeah, it's after. Yeah. Short time. I'd like to start the July 1st Wilton Town Board meeting and welcome you all here. It's been a long time. You want to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Supervisor Lamb. Here. Deputy Supervisor McEachran. Here. Councilman Bogardis. Here. Councilwoman Culligan. Here. Councilman O'Connor. Here. Is anybody signed up to speak? Uh, yes. I think the young men may have signed yeah. up there. So they're going to speak when. No. no, we don't have anyone there. No one there? No. All right. Did everybody get a chance to read last month's minutes? You got any questions? If not, I'm going to make a motion to approve them. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to approve them. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed. We have a retirement employee here, Richard McCain. The town's got a plaque presented to Richard McCain by the Wilton Town Board. <laughs> The recognition of your dedicated oil service while serving as a working supervisor and motor vehicle op operator in the town of Wilton Highway Department. Your 31 years, three months, and 33 days of service has made the workday that much brighter. Thank you for making our town a safer place to live and best wishes on your well-deserved retirement. And I've worked with you for quite a few years and I always appreciated your great work ethic and your dedication to our town. Thank you, Richard. We have three fine young gentlemen here. We're going to present an award to their Eagle Scouts, Trevor Borden, Jackson Eleanor, and Evan Smith. I don't know if I got your name, but if I didn't, I'm sorry. <coughs> Susie's going to read a pro proclamation for your great jobs you guys do. Whereas, oh, excuse me, proclamation commending Trevor Borden upon attaining Eagle Scout rank. Whereas Trevor Borden is a member of Boy Scout Troop 4024 of Wilton and recently achieved the rare distinction of the rank of Eagle Scout. And whereas an Eagle Scout award honors the Scout, his family, his troop, and his troop leaders. Mm -hmm. And whereas a Boy Scout is required to complete an Eagle Leadership Service Project as part of, the qualify as part of qualifying for the rank of Eagle Scout. And whereas Trevor Borden planned and led a project to build a large shed at Camp Saratoga in Wilton, New York. Whereas Trevor Borden set his goal and completed his plan to build a shed with a concrete base and sliding doors to house an ATV and grooming apparatus. And whereas it is fitting to recognize the unusual dis dedication and diligence exhibited by Trevor Borden in attaining the rank of Eagle Scout. Therefore, be it proclaimed that the Wilton Town Board commends Trevor Borden for his attainment of the rank of Eagle Scout in the Boy Scouts of America, and be it further proclaimed that the town clerk forward a du duly scrolled copy of this proclamation of commendation to Trevor Borden. Proclamation commending Jackson Elnor upon attaining Eagle Scout rank. Whereas Jackson Elnor is a member of Boy Scout Troop 4024 of Wilton and recently achieved the rare distinction of the rank of Eagle Scout. Whereas an Eagle Scout award honors the Scout, his family, his troop, and his troop leaders. And whereas a Boy Scout is required to complete an Eagle Leadership Service project as part of qualifying for the rank of Eagle Scout. 
whereas Jackson Elnor planned and led a project to build a bridge in Moreau State Park in Saratoga County to be used by hikers as well as equestrian riders. And whereas Jackson Elnor set his goal and completed his plan by having the bridge built to accommodate two horses to cross in opposite directions with side rails for safety. Mm -hmm. And whereas it is fitting to recognize the unusual dedication and diligence exhibited by Jackson Elnor in attaining the rank of Eagle Scout. Therefore, be it proclaimed that the Wilton Town Board commends Jackson Elmer for his attainment of the rank of Eagle Scout in the Boy Scouts of America, and be it further proclaimed that the town clerk forward a duly inscrolled copy of this proclamation commendation to Jackson Elmer. Proclamation commending Evan Schmidt upon attaining Eagle Scout rank. Whereas Evan Schmidt is a member of Boy Scout Troop 4024 of Wilton and recently achieved the rare distinction of the rank of Eagle Scout. And whereas an Eagle Scout award honors the Scout, his family, his troop, and his troop leaders. And whereas a Boy Scout is required to complete the Eagle Leadership Service Project as part of qualifying for the rank of Eagle Scout. And whereas Evan Schmidt planned and led a project to rebuild a Lake Ann lean-to at Monroe State Park, whereas Evan Schmidt set his goal and completed his plan to rebuild the rotting structure by leveling the area and building with new and reused timber from the original structure, and whereas it is fitting to recognize the unusual dedication and diligence exhibited by Evan Schmidt in attaining the rank of Eagle Scout. Therefore, be it proclaimed that the Wilton Town Board commend Evan Schmidt for his attainment of the rank of Eagle Scout in the Boy Scouts of America, and be it further proclaimed that the town clerk forward a duly inscrolled copy of this proclamation of commendation to Evan Schmidt. Congratulations, I want you to know the town yeah. board feels just like your parents. We're awful proud of all of you, and I honestly believe you, you all will be better people in life because of what you do. Mm -hmm. They got to get pictures, Chief. You guys want to stand up here and then you together your parents can take pictures of you. Perfect. Congratulations, guys. Yes. Good thing I'm not behind them. got two more bridges to build. <laughs> Listen, if you guys need something else to do, just call so we'll get you some more projects. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to go, you're free to go. We were to stay, but thank you for Thank you there. very much. Thank you all. <laughs> thank you guys. Congratulations. That lean to up and lean something. It's amazing. Yeah, it's been in there. Yeah. 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 It is nice to be here in person. Yes. I was just thinking about Trevor when I was driving over here, thinking about the Eagle Scouts that were going to be honored. I had no idea it was Trevor. And it's just so wonderful. I wish he was still here so I could say wonderful things about him to his face because, you know, we were the beneficiaries of his project. And Aaron, um, who I don't know if all of you have met, Aaron McCade is our environmental educator and the stewardship and volunteer coordinator at Wilton Wildlife Preserve and Park. And she was saying to Trevor, well, you could say, I love my shed. <laughs> 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 Aaron, a huge 
So, yeah, Erin is responsible. She's the main person who does all the grooming for the last three, four years mm -hmm. at Camp Saratoga. So all the winter trail maintenance is really, you know, under under Erin's work with help with other volunteers who have helped with that. And so she was gushing to Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> so it feels very appropriate that we were here to see him honored that way. Um, and uh, I do have to mention too that you know the town you know to make that project happen was really instrumental they talked about pouring the concrete that you know all the town Scott you know the town workers it was really again like I feel like so much that happens with Little Mall like Preserve and Park is a partnership happening between all of the different partners really helping you know with volunteers to make things happen so uh, really Trevor exemplifies that then the project and the benefit to the public of having the trails groomed especially we you know this past winter with COVID and how many people were out there every day snowshoeing and cross-country skiing and getting out and getting fresh air and getting out of their houses in a healthy safe way so um, so I feel really glad that our first in-person report is following Trevor um, so I think you all got the report that we submitted uh, for the town board, uh, updating you on our, our programs, our educational programs. As you know, our mission has the environmental education is really the, a very big part of what we do. We support the work of DEC and the Nature Conservancy, our partners, in their work in environmental conservation. And then again, as we just were talking about, the other piece of our mission is, you know, encouraging and working to promote the outdoor recreation that can take place on all of the parcels that are owned, not only by the town, by New York State, the county, um, and uh, the Nature Conservancy. And so we are really pleased to be able to work with them. Erin, the stewardship coordinator, has a whole crew of volunteer parcel stewards who go out on a regular basis and walk the trails and then report back to her so she can report back to the right people to let them know especially like with storms that we just had if there were trees down or problems that need to be addressed so we have that volunteer core that's really wonderful that she works with on a regular basis and they've worked through all of COVID and everything helping keep parking lots clean um, I think back on Earth Day they worked um, you might have seen the men they cleaned up the whole parking lot and replanted and weeded out the planter and actually tomorrow with the field work Fridays every other Friday Erin coordinates with uh, the volunteers and they cleaned up this stairwell uh, stairwell stairway that's, uh, that goes up the hill from the lake up to the cabins up by the fire tower that had gotten very damaged actually Matthew you were there as well um, helping to get those stairs back into shape so people can go up those safely um, so that was one of her field work Fridays this Friday they're going to work on tackling leaving some of the overgrown planter areas around the parade ground um, the uh, Virginia creeper is creeping up the flagpole. So, <laughs> so they were going to work on doing some of that. So that's a lot of the volunteer work that happens. And then as I mentioned, the environmental education, all the different programs that we have taking place um, for the public. Uh, we miscalculated a little something. Uh, we planned uh, to do a lot more public programs. So we have weekly arts hours, weekly pond exploration that we started doing right away in the spring because we said, oh, we're not gonna have any field trips this year. Then we got field trips. So some of the school districts actually came and visited the park. So we were a little busier in a different way mm -hmm. because we had committed to doing all these public programs and at the same time, we wanted to get the school kids and the teachers, it was, we had Ballard Road and Tanglewood, um, some of the local schools that had come with the field trips and the teachers were like, we're out of the classroom. <laughs> we are not. <laughs> yeah, so not yeah, so it was really fun to be able to get the kids out there on the trails and they got to see the carnival butterflies and we got to, you know, be down at Delgan Pond finding tadpoles and all kinds of things in the pond. So, um, so that's, that's been our spring. Um, and so we are now, I guess, into the summer. Um, we're doing some planning. Um, we met with some of you from the town board talking about some planning to um, get started again after the pause with COVID on the um, 
Camp Saratoga of the Larry Borden project to develop a visit visitor information center there. Um, so that is just, we're starting again with that. Um, slightly revised plans, a little simpler. Looking to reutilize all of the historic buildings that are there at Camp Saratoga instead of building one big building, but using the smaller buildings. So it'll give us many opportunities to improve, um, improve those buildings and use them for all the purposes that we had thought could be under sort of one roof of a, of a visitor center. So we're excited to be starting on that project again. And in fact, I think the next thing on the agenda is related to that, that we will be working with the town. I'll be working with Brian and Scott to do some of the number crunching to figure out you know, what some of those renovations and rehabilitations of those buildings will will entail so that when we put in grant with the state at the end of July, you know, hopefully we'll be able to get those funds that we can then um, use to help move that project forward. You might as well right ahead and talk about the grant from the state. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so last year the state did not um, offer through the consolidated funding application uh, any grants. So this this July is you know it was a I, it will probably be very competitive because there were a lot of grants that people were hoping to get last year that they'll be reapplying for this year. Obviously, a lot of needs have arisen in the state over the last two years too. But we are hopeful that this is a realistic project. And we will be applying to the Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation under parks. And they have a specific category for exactly this, taking underutilized buildings and making them more usable for the public. They, they talk about accessibility not being like from a, you know, the, what is it, the, from a handicap standpoint, but, but accessibility in being available for use for the public and encouraging different user and different diverse groups to come and be able to access these public spaces. So I feel like we can make a strong case. I feel like we made a strong case two years ago when we put in the grant with the town. But um, we're, as I said, we're changing the project. We're making it a little bit smaller, a little bit more, I think, manageable. And I think that hopefully it will be competitive. And we do have you know, some funds that were committed that we had that we were able to raise before we stopped the whole thing with COVID. So we're going to be able to use those funds to match um, hopefully what we're asking for in that CFA grant. So because I think the state requires a 50-50 match for those funds. So because we do not own the buildings that we will, we're, our, this project is going to do at Camp Saratoga, that's what this resolution is for because the town owns the property and the town is going to be, the town needs to resolve that it is behind the project. And, um, and so that is what the goal of the resolution is. It's part of the requirement for the application since we don't own the buildings and own the property. Do you want to speak, Ryan? No. Said right. Somebody well. want to make a motion to approve and endorse the application of Wilton Wildlife Preserve and Park for the grant at Camp Saratoga. I'll make the motion to uh, support and endorse the application of the Wilton Wildlife Preserve and Park for the grant at Camp Saratoga. <coughs> Second. 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 <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Thank you, Margo. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At the hazardous waste state bed, but if I had a chance to look at it. The way I looked at it, that Clean Harbor is the one to go with. I know going to the fire department, we worked with them quite a bit and they were always right on the ball and did a great job. I agree. Yeah. We need a motion to accept Clean Harbors? Yes. Well, you may want to make the motion. I'll make a motion to accept Clean Harbor's bid. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Gary. The house on 173 Traver was burnt. This past one was uh, taken down. It's all uh, completed. Look it up. Number 11, smoking policy. Can you tell me to quit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Ten, 10 years. As long as you're not smoking while you're sitting next to me. All right. It's up to you. <laughs> but you should, yeah. I know I should. He's, uh -huh. not, he's not a quitter. 
What he keeps telling me. <laughs> the, uh, the, la the last few months, we had a number of discussions about the uh, new cannabis uh, regulations and its legalization in the state of New York. And uh, one of the things that we <clears throat> did not address are uh, situations in uh, or locations in which uh, cannabis could be used. Uh, we simply addressed its sale and distribution uh, in the town last month. Um, so I had a conversation with our uh, counsel, Mr. Shatner, uh, earlier in the week, uh, talking about perhaps crafting a local law that would limit the locations, uh, particularly as it applies to uh, public properties, Gavin Park, Town Hall Complex, uh, other town-owned properties. Um, Mark, I don't know if you want to comment on our conversation or the or the topic. I mean, it was a, it was somewhat intentional that you didn't address this issue when you adopted the law you adopted last month because at the time I think Councilor Khan Andreas should be addressed that now and I think I advise not don't don't mix it up with the Ottawa law. Um, I stood by that advice, but I think now the notion is whether you want to regulate the ability or the right of people to smoke um, other things than tobacco in the other areas, which I think we currently prohibit smoking of cigarettes. In. I think you can do that, um, as Ray has talked about. I think if you want to do that, you can do that. I think you can apply the policy to town-owned properties, any town-owned properties. But doesn't this also, isn't this covered mostly under our drug and alcohol policy? I don't, under the current existing drug and alcohol policy? Maybe so. I haven't looked at that in, in a long time. I mean, the ingestion of cannabis is still a drug, whether it's legal or not. True. And I know we have policies within the town as far as employees, you know, drinking alcohol or under influences and stuff like that, which carries across all of our properties. Only as to employees or visitors as well? Uh, we're talking about visitors, I think. Right. And I believe there's no alcohol and drugs on on uh, Gavin Park and other uh, public properties. There's supposed to be no alcohol again. Right, so do we need to make a local law for something we already have a policy? If, if our no alcohol policy also includes no drugs at the whole town of our properties, it, the answer is you don't have to do anything. You, you're under no obligation to do any of the things you're being, that are being discussed. But if, and, and if your goal is to prohibit the um, use of marijuana on town-owned properties, if it's covered already as in our drug policy, then you don't need to do belt and suspenders. If it's not, you have the authority, but not the obligation to do that. Yeah. Yes. I can't say that I'm familiar enough, although I've read quite yeah, a bit. I haven't looked at it in a long time. Yeah. I've, um, either with the local law or whether or not our local law would be superseded by the state law that was recently passed legalizing the use of cannabis. If our local law prohibits use of drugs on all our town hall properties, I don't think the state law would supersede that, but I can look into that. But first we need yeah. to figure, figure out if our local law does or doesn't cover it. I just don't really, either I don't know or I don't really know. Yeah. You know, or the town law might might include illegal drugs or illicit drugs, which of which cannabis is not. Correct. In which case, it will no longer be prohibited under our local yeah. law. Okay. Well, right. we'll take a look at it and report back to the town board uh, next month. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. A while back, we uh, that can conservative easement has been sex from to read on it. Well, they ran out, so we have to somebody will make a motion to do it again. You want to say anything about it, Ryan? Yeah, essentially it's the same thing. The uh, the grant or the uh, resolution that the board passed in February of this year, the funds have run out. They didn't get the grant, obviously. So there's another grant opportunity, very similar to what you guys proved before. So they would just like to go for that. Now. I'll make a motion to endorse and support the conservation conservation easement on the insect farm. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Gary. How many uh, committee reports? Uh, I just have two quick things to talk to Robin today. Seniors are still doing great. They actually planned a trip to the Minnehaha in September to watch the leaves changing. And they are all over the moon excited <laughs> for that to happen. Yeah, I stopped there the first day they opened. Welcome them all back. Yeah. They wanted everybody to know that that was going to happen. Um, <coughs> real quick, short-term rental stuff. I uh, was in that webinar last week and I forwarded it along to you guys if, you know, in your spare time if you want to watch some of it. Um, got 
some stuff out of it, but really just that kind of almost a reassurance that we're not the only ones in that boat of trying to figure out mm -hmm. how to make it work, that there's not a lot of precedent um, ahead of us. Some things in court haven't held up. Um, and really just trying to find the right way to do it when it comes to zoning. And again, uh, the short-term rental stuff, we're not trying to control what people do with their private property. We're just trying to protect the neighbors um, more so next door by making sure that you know things aren't going all night and that we have just, when it when someone knocks on the door, a sheriff knocks on the door, that it, it matters. Um, and hopefully we'll get something figured out eventually. That's all I have. Well, thank you for doing that. Yeah. As you all know, Gavin Park Summer Camp is open. And we're all 50 right across from uh, Perry Road, the state DEC with the highway department. Thank you, Kirk, and Mike, for all the work we did there. They built an archery range. I went over, I thought it was going to be like two targets. There's got to be a dozen. They built a platform to shoot from. It's really, it's really, um, it's really um, impressive what they did. <laughs> I know Scott. And I hope Ryan don't ever try and hunt with a, a bow and arrow because I watched him try and hit the target. <laughs> better stick to a gun. You're not going to put an apple on your head? No, he's no Robin Hood. I can tell you that. <laughs> That's wrong. They kept moving Ouch. the target. Yeah. You can't shoot at a target when the one's the wind, yeah. the battery was bad in the sight. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> the wind was blown. It was yeah. on a paper yeah. target. Yeah. It was a long ways away. <laughs> so it was from here to the mall. He, he isn't supposed to use a chainsaw or from Scottsburg <laughs> or a bow and arrow. That's me. I put the tree on the pool, not Ryan. No. Put Maria, would you want to give your uh, controller report? Yes. So item one under budget transfers is to make room in the budget for a um, additional cost for the town hall parking lot um, repair. Item two is to fund some background check expenditures for the um, summer camp counselors that had to be background checked before they began working. Items three through six relates to funding the specific um, department codes for the specific roads from already budgeted permanent improvements. We're just moving money from something that's already appropriated to um, the specific items that need to be funded. Item seven is moving money from unused highway snow removal salaries to fund some um, tree removal off of Loudon Road, an unexpected additional tree that needed to be removed. And item eight is uh, also taking some money from unused highway snow removal salaries to fund additional uh, road repair. So those are the seven budget transfers. I'll make a motion. Does anybody got any questions for Mrs. Moran? No, they all good. All right, so we want to make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve budget transfers, transfers. one through eight. Right, I'll second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry. Thank you. Item two relates to budget amendments, and we uh, know that we are not going to have a summer bus um, contract for the summer camp. So we're going to take that money out of the budget and instead use it to, um, excuse me, I'm gonna say this in a different way. We know we're not gonna have any summer camp field trips, and we know we're not gonna need the expenditure for the summer buses, the summer camp buses. So we're just taking those two items off of the budget. The revenue and the expenditures are coming off budget because there are no summer camp field trips. Item two uh, relates to an increase in CHIPS revenue that we're expecting to get from the state this year. Uh, the state budget for 2021 included an increase in CHIPS for most localities, so we're happy to say that we're going to be able to use that money for some of the um, projects that we already have in play. So those are the two budget amendments. So we might make a motion for the budget amendments. I'll make a motion for budget amendments one and two. I'll second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Item three relates to personnel. Um, William Lomlansky is a recreation maintenance worker and he has submitted his letter of resignation effective August 2nd, 2021. And uh, the board is requested to accept his resignation. I'll make a motion to accept his resignation. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. 
And the last item, item four, is for asset disposal. Kirk Woodcock, who's our highway superintendent, is requesting to place the following items for sale on Auctions International. There's a Cedar Rapids paver, it's old paver, 2000 model that we acquired in 2003. A pile of wood and logs, surplus scrap, and a gas powered cutoff saw. We want to make a motion to get rid of that stuff. So moved. Second. Favor. Aye. Carried. Thank you. Kirk, I want to thank you and Mike for the great job you did on the paper road. It looks beautiful. Yeah. We picked up already 48 speed tickets, and thank you for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kirk. Thank you. 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 Thank I need one that sits in my driveway and watches the stop sign. Anybody got anything to say from the crowd? Anybody got anything to say? No, it's good to be back. Yeah, it's yeah. nice to be back in person. I'll make a motion to adjourn. A second. Second. In favor. Thank you all for coming.